If you show the expression of love to people, it means you have kept the instructions of God and have practiced the injunctions of Jesus Christ. And that is why it is concluded in the golden text that states, Love worketh no ill unto his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. You who contemplate on what to do in order to please the Lord, know that love of one another is the answer. Don't bother about how to serve God, but love one another. All other commandments are of the flesh and cannot take you anywhere. They cannot take you anywhere spiritually. Only love can give you eternal life in God's kingdom. You have also heard that whoever has love dwells in the light, and there is no cause of stumbling for him. 1 John 2.10 Whoever hates his brother abides in death. Love does not require wisdom in order to thrive. This is because once you love someone, you cannot lie to him, you cannot steal his things, or you cannot do anything that will hurt him. The major problem of the world is how to identify God, a being which everyone has agreed that no one has ever seen. Now if no person has ever seen him, when he arrives, how will one identify him? When the being would say, Look, I am the God that you have been seeking, you will not believe, because you have never seen him. In the same token, love is what no human being has ever possessed. That explains why fake love abounds, and why man has accepted this fake love as being genuine. People regard men or trees or other creatures as God. Now this is false. Man equally regards money, houses, clothing, and other mundane things as love. He also has erred. Love does not seek after any mundane wealth, and it does not harm any person. If any person says he or she loves you, but abuses you, he or she is a liar. That person has no love for you. If any person professes to love you, and they disgrace you always, and they do not allow you to air your views, such a person does not possess love. If we had loved our Lord Jesus Christ, we would have loved our brethren. For this was a supreme instruction from the Father, that whosoever loves God must also love his brother. If you see any person who loves everybody and does not get annoyed, neither does he impute sin on others, but he rather rejoices with everyone. Such a person loves God very much. Anger, lamentation, flogging, sighing, and murmuring, these are all acts of sin. So any person found indulging in these vices does not possess love. If you go to someone's house and you find him frowning or sighing, you will conclude that something is wrong. It is said that blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, verse 3. If then you start lamenting that you are poor, does it mean that you love Jesus Christ? He said, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Matthew 5.11 If you are falsely accused because of God, because of Jesus, and you are not happy, it means you neither love him nor you believe in him. Let us read the second lesson. The second Bible lesson comes from John 14.23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Our Lord Jesus Christ directed that whoever has two coats should give one to him who does not have any. He that has something to eat, let him do likewise. Found in Luke 3.11. Well, have you done that? Whatever you have which is double, you have to give one out to him who has none. If you do this, it means that you love him, you love God. Otherwise, 
the reverse is the case. It is said that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other one also, which is found in Matthew 5.39. If you act negatively to this injunction, it means you neither believe nor love our Lord Jesus Christ. Furthermore, it is said, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, which is found in Matthew 5.44. Your failure to comply positively with the above injunction declares you a rebel. It is written, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Matthew 5.48 How can you be perfect even as Christ is perfect? Exercise absolute and ultimate love for all and sundry, and you will qualify for perfection. Those are his true instructions, and they are his true injunctions. Any person, therefore, who is not perfect, does not believe in Jesus Christ, and does not love Jesus. If you do not obey the instructions of our Lord Jesus Christ, how can you know and how can you obey the Father? You cannot even believe or love the Father. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. We find this in John 14, verse 6. Whosoever loves the Son will equally love the Father, and the Father will also love him. Automatically, anyone who loves the Father will love his brethren. Anyone who claims to love the Father but hates his brethren is a liar. Look at 1 John 4, 20. The commandment of our Lord Jesus Christ is very simple, and it gives you joy if you practice it. Beloved brethren, the works of God and that of the flesh are incompatible. You will discover that all along you have been carrying the heavier burden, whereas God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, has taken away your burden. The work of the flesh is very difficult, whereas that of God is very simple and very light. Immediately when you obey his words by loving one another, you are saved. This is comparable to a lottery where you throw in a couple of dollars and you win thousands of dollars. If you put in $10 to gain $1,000, what have you lost? Similarly, if you love our Lord Jesus Christ, you will keep his words and the Father will love you. The Holy Spirit and the Father will dwell in you. Can you now see what you will gain with your little love? It is clear that in the entire world God dwells only in brotherhood of the cross and star. This is a result of love which is found herein. If the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit live in you, then you will not lack houses, money, clothing, brethren, wealth, and power. What do you think will ever harm or threaten such a person whom God indwells? Where God Almighty dwells is holy, and no evil or temptation, darkness or confusion, segregation, lamentation, and the like can ever be found in such a place. You can see that the presence of God in any place and in anything sanctifies and strengthens such a place or thing. I do not need anything, either materially or spiritually, from the world. I come that you may be transformed from imperfect and sinfulness to perfect and a sinless nature, so that where I am, you may also be there. Love is reciprocal in nature. If you love someone and that person does not love you, it means that the love will be dried up and die away very soon. In John 15 and 9, he says, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Jesus Christ loved the Father, and the Father loved him, because he abided by the Father's commandment. For that reason, he and the Father are one, and they are an indivisible entity. In one of the powerful statements of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is recorded that I am one that beareth witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. This is found in John eight 
18. From the time of Adam to the era of our Lord Jesus Christ, only our Lord Jesus Christ loved God perfectly. And that was why the Father said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew 3, 17. The building of cathedrals, electrifying and equipping it with modern amenities, does not qualify one as a child of God. The situation does not rest on shouting the name of Olumba Olumba Obu. Love does not constitute healing the sick, raising the dead, and making the lame to walk. It is neither giving a lot of money to people or training people in the university. He that keeps the commandments or instructions of our Lord Jesus Christ loves him and therefore loves the Father. Such a person must also love the entire world.